Okay. <laughs> well, good evening. I'd like to call the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order on Tuesday, January 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, welcome. I'm Adam Miller, and I'll be chairing tonight's meeting. As we begin, I'd like to mention a few housekeeping items for the commission and members of the public present remotely. Uh, public comment will be solicited during each actionable agenda item. Once I ask for public comment on a specific item, please click raise hand in the GoToWebinar in order to make public comment. Before being individually identified, all members of the public will be muted. Village staff will announce the speaker by stating their name and, and unmute their audio to allow up to three minutes of public comment. When called, please state your name and address for the record and proceed with your comment, speaking clearly during your allocate allotted time. Also, please note, um, please limit background noise as much as possible. Do not use the chat or question function in the GoToWebinar, as those functions are not, will not be monitored during the meeting. And note that this meeting can also be viewed live on Comcast Local Channel 18 or streamed at royalpalmbeach.com slash YouTube. Um, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Christina, can you do the roll call, please? Yes. Chairman Adam Miller. Present. Vice Chair Philip Marquis. Present. Commissioner June Perrin. Commissioner David Leland. Present. Commissioner Ray Nasra. Here. Laura McClellan, alternate one. Present. Gerald Brown, alternate two. Thank you, Christina. Um, we have the minutes from, la from the November 15th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Um, do you need a motion made? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the December 2021 meeting. Okay, uh, motion made by Commissioner Leland. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Marquis. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Minutes passed 5-0. Great, so our uh, only agenda item, application number 21-98 for VAR, 245 Ponderosa Court, the applicant Herbert Donowit, Danowit, is requesting a variance from section 2679 4D to allow for a reduced side setback of 8.5 feet for an existing pergola where village code requires 15 feet, a variance of 6.5 feet for a property located at 245 Ponderosa Court. Uh, Mitty, I'd like to pass it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Danowick, could you approach the podium there? Could you state your name for the record? Thank you, sir. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding, so I need to swear you and Bradford in. Could you both raise your right hands for me? Do you swear from to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you both. I'll turn back to the commission and ask if there are any, any ex parte disclosures with regard to application number 21-98VAR that need to be disclosed. No. Nope. None. Thank you. Thank you, Mitty. Uh, Bradford, over to you, sir. Great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I would like to first start off by introducing... Um, Deborah, she's our new senior planner. Um, we're happy to have her on board, and she's been here for maybe a little bit over a month now, and she's doing great work for us. Um, Welcome. <laughs> the applicant is requesting a variance from section 2679-4D to allow for a reduced side setback of eight and a half feet, where village code requires 15 feet, a variance of six and a half feet. The applicant is requesting the variance to allow the placement of existing pergola that measures 12 feet by 24 feet. The village sent out the required mail notice to all residents with 300 feet radius of the subject property, notifying the property owners of the variance request. The village did not receive any response either supporting or objecting to this application. Highlighted in blue is the pergola setback in relation to the rear property line, or I'm sorry, the side, side property line. <clears throat> the applicant asserts that, quote, the only space in the yard where I could have built the pergola to enjoy my backyard with family members, the pergola is inside homeowner's yard and could not affect or be injurious to neighborhood or public welfare. Village Code Section 2632F6 <laughs> allows for the Village Council to grant variances of Code 1 Special conditions and circumstances exist, do not result from the actions of the applicant, will not confer on the applicant any special privilege, a literal interpretation of the provisions of the 
provision will deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties. Uh, that the variance granted is a minimum variance that would make possible reasonable use of the land. It will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of the division. It will not be injurious to the area involved or detrimental to the public welfare. Staff is not in support of the variance request since we feel as though no special conditions or circumstances exist um, as a result of the actions of the applicant. Um, it does not deprive the applicant the rights enjoyed by other lands in the same zoning district. Um, therefore, again, staff is recommending a um, recommended denial of this application. But I do want to go back to the slide where you chose um, the pergola on the uh, survey. <coughs> and if you notice that this property is on a corner lot, so it's not getting closer to someone else's back property or rear property line and closer to them. This is getting closer to a street. So maybe something that you take in consideration when you consider this variance application. And with that being said, I'll turn the floor back over to you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Bradford, and thanks for pointing that out. Um, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Danowit, I believe you have a presentation. Would you like to say anything? Thank you, sir. Um, oh, which one here? Okay. So, uh, no, no questions, no comments, or at all. I think okay. he's just here making himself available to answer any questions that you guys may have. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to ask the commissioners. We're going to go around for comments and discussion. We'll start with Commissioner McClellan. I just have one question about everything says that it's existing. So how did this come to light? Code enforcement. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Leland. How, how long has the has it been there? You said it was there whenever you got there. It's, it's sometimes hard to tell with existing. Um, I know, but was it there when you bought the house? No. You put it in. I put it in. And how was it permitted? Well, when I moved in, uh, there was no permit. That was my mistake. Um, I never lived in a gated community. I came from northern Wisconsin. So I thought that I, I needed a permit. Then my HOA president came over, and she said, did you get a permit? And I said, no. Why should I get a permit inside my property? And then she enlightened me, or opened my eyes into it. You're in a gated community, you're in the village of William Palm Beach. You need a permit for anything that you're going to build. You, you need to get a permit. And um, next thing I know, I got served a notice saying that I was in violation. And if I wanted to correct it, I need to call the village and submit the proper documentation application to pay the fees that I'm supposed to. So I started the whole process. So that's my story. Um, it was <coughs> honestly, I like I said, I'm from the northern Wisconsin. I never even thought that I needed a permit to build something inside my property in the back. So they told me, "No, you're wrong, and you need to correct it." So that's when I started the whole process. And Mr. Leland, if I could just clarify, that's how he got to code enforcement. It was for the pergola without a permit. So that's what's the code enforcement violation. That's what it was initiated. Um, and now he's part in the variance process because he can't be issued a permit because it's in the uh, setback. I sympathize with you, but I myself have been in the same position. <laughs> Thank you. And I had to remove my... So... I, I agree that it's 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 tough and it is a, a hindrance for you but I mean we all have to follow the rules and that's what really this commission has to do and the rules say that's it's in the setback well, you said it clue that part of the whole variance process is to look at each individual situation yeah, but you have to understand, too, that when we open up that door, we open it up for a lot of people to do it. That's correct. Yeah. So, um, and that's why I back down from being told by code enforcement that my 
building was in a setback, and I had to pay. I actually donated it to a youth group. So, and my, I, I was told that the, the Palm Beach County have no issues with the, uh, for example, the Eastman, where a little corner of it was that I could go and apply for a variance. And I saw that was the usual process that under certain circumstances that you are allowed to ask for a variance if it does not affect other people or if in, in other way violate any other laws or issues in the area. Yeah, I understand. Um, my position is going to be to say no, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Um, but that would be something to bring up before, you know, the council. Right. I understand. <clears throat> That's the only thing I just wanted to point out is that they can make variances uh, for that, um, but we really, especially on something like this, it's very difficult uh, when we set a precedent like that. You know, that, that's why those rules exist. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner McCollum? Sorry, I have another question. Yep, go ahead. Um, Mr. Mark Flynn, Board of Trustees. So, Bradford, what are the s other setbacks for this district? What's the other the rear, the side, the front, and then the side of the street? 25 in the rear. And then the side setback is. 15 feet, and that's to the street. And then the rear setback is? 25. 25. And you don't have a side street setback? Yeah, the side street is that's 15 feet. Okay. Right. Okay. So then the least amount of setback for this district is 15 feet. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, um, you know, I'd just like to tell the applicant thank you for being honest, sir. Appreciate that. And um, um, uh, Commissioner Marquis? Questions, comments? Uh, I have a question for you. Actually, I could see that you're uh, a code violation, and uh, you know you just became aware of it, and you're uh, asking for a variance. Is was there a specific reason why you needed this pergola and so close to the street? I mean, I want to hear your version. What I do for a living is one of my specialty. I'm in mean, medicine. Uh, pandemics. So I moved to the area four years and I was <coughs> teaching, I'm teaching at Wellington Regional Medical Center. And one of the things that I teach is uh, because of my past experience is how to deal with uh, infectious diseases. And I'm also born in, in internal medicine, hospital medicine, and infection. When the pandemic started in uh, when we started hearing about it around that time, I knew at that point that I will, this is not something that's gonna go away that quickly. I have a large, very large family, and, the, and I have a mother that I'm taking care of that has Alzheimer's. One of the things that I knew was gonna happen, I, I was not gonna send my mother to a nursing home or a memory care ward because that's where if one person gets that she's going to spread and she's 92 years old. So I knew that what I needed to do is until they don't develop a vaccine or some form of therapeutics that I will have to take, uh, take care of her at home with my wife and all my other siblings. I also have other siblings you know that, uh, that I knew they were going to have some health issues like one of my siblings have a liver transplant and another one has a kidney transplant. Anyway, I knew that this, there was going to be come, come, come a point where I would have to assume or you know, help them out because I knew that there would be like a lot of people at the beginning, we didn't know what we were dealing with and I knew isolation and, and what's going to happen. I didn't know how long it was going to last, but I knew it was going to be more than a year. So I decided if I'm going to have all these people coming in and stay with us, I'm going to have to find a way to keep them outdoors to do some activity, particularly my mother who has Alzheimer's. So that's the reason why we built the pergola, because we needed an outdoor place to minimize the risk of infection, at the same time have a social outlet, a place where we can do activities. 
because I knew they were going to be lot tablets. So I, I knew that was coming. So that's, that was my motivation to do this pergola. And I needed help. I put a child out of the home. And that would mean the fresh air and so on and so on. So that was what motivated me to do that. Part of it, you know, was my own understanding of the situation and anticipating what was coming. Unfortunately, what I saw was going to happen, happened. And um, but that was really the reasoning for that. Otherwise, I would not build it, to be honest. I can relate to that. I have a mother, too, and I, I uh, probably would do something similar. In other words, try to get everybody outdoors and, and stop with them. I mean, you had your intent, and you explained that to me, and I thank you for it. You're there, Commissioner Navajo? That's, okay. that's all I have. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'd like to open the floor to public comment on this item. Do we have anyone in, online? Nobody online. Okay. So I'd like to close the floor to public comment. And do I hear a motion made on this item? I'll make a motion with the floor. Okay. So motion made by Commissioner Marquis. I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Nazareth. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. So motion passes four to one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Danowitz. Thank you. Appreciate in the future you would uh, take care of all the permits and everything in the, in, in before. I learned thank my you. lesson. We're good. Okay. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Okay. So um, our next meeting, uh, the next time the agenda is board business, this next meeting is Tuesday, February 22nd. After it's Valentine's Day, don't forget to get people flowers. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the planning and zoning mission uh, commission meeting? Motion made to adjourn the meeting by Commissioner Marquis. <coughs> Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Leland. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, we are adjourned. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just move on to the next meeting. Okay, I'd like to call the local planning agency meeting to order on Tuesday, January 25th at 7.17 p.m. Um, Christina, you want to, I think you do the same roll call as before? You can just let the record reflect that the yeah. same um, members of the commission are on for LPA. Thank you. Um, and now I need approval of the meeting minutes from December 20th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of that meeting. Okay. A uh, motion made to approve the minutes by Commissioner Marquito. I have a second. No second. Second and by Commissioner Leland. <laughs> All nice in favor? Tonight. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Minutes passed 5 0. Great job, everyone. Okay, the only other item on the agenda is Ordinance 980 proposes to amend the village's code of ordinances at Chapter 26, zoning. Article 4, supplemental regulations to add an entirely new section 26.75.6, airport, ob airport obstructions and incompatible land uses within the village. In order to impose requirements on such obstructions and land uses in accordance with Chapter 333. Our statutes. Um, uh, Mitty, over to you. Thank you, sir. So uh, the ordinance that you have before you, just one um, kind of <coughs> clarifying statement. As you said that this is an entirely new section to be added to the village's zoning code. Um, what you don't have in the version bef before you is because sometimes it makes it too difficult to read, but all of that language is new language, so it should be double underlined, but mm -hmm. all of that is new language that currently does not exist in the village's code. So essentially what this is, um, in sort of your several months now of things that state law requires. Um, the state law requires that when there is an airport that has areas either on approach or exit from the airport that are on top of the village, let's say, so you have flight paths that come over portions of the village um, into PBIA, that you either create an enforcement board, an re airport regulation board, or you get into an interlocal agreement with Palm Beach County and you implement regulations in your code to ensure consistency between what the county is requiring of the airport and what you are requiring of people who are coming through the village to do development. So what this does um, is last week before the council was that interlocal agreement, so that's in the process of getting executed. These are the zoning regulations. 
which adopt by reference the county's regulations. And as you'll see on page two at the bottom, the only deviation, there's two essential deviations, but we adopt by reference the county's ordinance, but then we carve out and we specifically require that development that could potentially impact um, these regulations, that they go through the village's development review process, not the county's. It's a completely separate process. So um, this ordinance carves that out. It also carves out one other portion on page three uh, with regard to land use compatibility. It's just to ensure that the village's code and compatibility is used rather than the county's because the county code applies to unincorporated county uh, and our village requirements are more appropriate. So it's a pretty simple ordinance. It's pretty short. Um, I'll answer any questions that you have. <clears throat> Excuse me, the county's airport regulations are not very robust. It's a 14 page chapter. Um, essentially what it does is creates different zones depending on the impact. So the closer you are to the airport, it's obviously a more severe impact the further out you go. There's different restrictions and different requirements. Um, so we're adopting those by reference, essentially just to make sure that we're regulating development that could have the potential to impact aviation in the same way that the county is. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll open it up to questions. Any questions? Okay. Um, I'd like to, to open the floor to public comment. Anyone online? Nobody online. I will close the floor to public comment and like to request a motion to be made on Ordinance 980. I'll make a motion that we approve Ordinance 980. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Leland. Do I have a second? I have a second. Second by Commissioner Marquis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes five to zero. Congratulations, everyone. In our next meeting, the local planning agency will be on Tuesday, February 22nd. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Commissioner Marquis. Do we have a second? Wow, these two guys at the end don't want to say anything. <laughs> Seconded by Commissioner McMillan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned, folks. Thank you. Great job, everyone. You're welcome. And hope everyone has a great evening. Have a good night. You too. Stay warm. <laughs>